Hello everyone. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at the steps for designing a reinforced concrete square columns. And this is going to be based on ACI code, which is known as American Concrete Institute code. So before you can properly design a reinforced concrete columns, there are a series of steps you need to follow. So let's take a look at the steps. Now, if you take a look at the screen, we have the step one. So the first step is you first need to determine the fatal load PU. So the formula is 1.2 multiplied by the dead load plus 1.6 multiplied by the life load. So the dead load, this is basically going to be the self weight of the column. So we can also have additional dead load, load that are not moving. So the formula for the fatal load is basically 1.2 dead load then plus 1.6 life load. So that is step one. Now, after calculating the fatal load, PU, the next step is you are going to assume a reinforcement ratio, rho G. So basically, a common assumption ratio would be 0.02 or 0.03. So you can start from 0.02 or 0.03 because this is going to uh, make our column more economical. And reinforcement ratio, this basically means the amount of steel we have in the column and the amount of concrete we have in the column so basically a reinforcement ratio of 0.02 this basically means two percent of the column consists of steel while 98 percent of the column consists of concrete so this is the meaning of reinforcement ratio so that is step two now the next step is we are going to calculate the ag minimum that is the minimum gross area so after assuming the reinforcement ratio, you are now going to calculate the minimum gross area. So this is the formula for calculating the minimum gross area. So it is going to be PU, which is the fatal load, then divided by phi. So basically, phi is the strength reduction factor, then multiplied by alpha. And alpha, this is going to account for accidental um, eccentricity. Now, why do we use alpha? Now, the reason for this is because when we are calculating the load on the column that is after doing our structural analysis to calculate the load on the column we basically assume that the load is going to be acting on the centroid of the column so this is what we usually assume but the problem with that is we are not 100 percent sure that this load is directly acting on the centroid of the column what if the load is acting away from the center of the column and when the load is acting away from the center of the column it is going to cause accidental eccentricity so because of that because we are not 100 percent sure we are not 100 percent accurate that the load is going to be acting on the center of the column then we need to reduce the accidental eccentricity and how do we do this we use what we know as alpha so this is why we are using alpha. So this is going to account for accidental eccentricity. So if you take a look at this uh, part of the screen here, this is the value for rho and the value for alpha. So rho is going to be 0 0.65 and this is just for square column and alpha is going to be 0 0.85. So take note of that. Then it's going to be multiplied by 0 0.85, then multiplied by Fc prime, which is the compressive strength of the concrete then multiply by 1 minus rho g, so rho g is basically the reinforcement ratio, then plus fy, which is going to be the tensile strength of the steel, then multiply by the reinforcement ratio. So this is how to calculate the minimum gross area. So after calculating the minimum gross area, the next step we need to do is, we now need to assume the column dimension. Now if you take a look at this side of the screen, the gross area is going to be equal to b squared, and this is if the column is a square column because if the column is a square column meaning the sizes are same the sizes are similar the width and the depth are similar so, so the gross area is basically going to be equal to b square because the sizes are the same so the square root of the gross area that is the minimum gross area is basically going to be the b minimum so it is going to be the uh, b minimum because the sizes are similar now the next step is we are now going to solve for the area of steel that is the minimum uh, area of steel so now we know the size of the column we now need to calculate the 
area of steel because, because we need to place steel inside the column. So we need to calculate AST minimum. So this is the formula we are going to use to calculate AST minimum. So it's going to be PU, which is the factor load, then minus the strength reduction factor, then minus alpha, which is to account for accidental eccentricity, then multiply by 0 0.85, multiply FC prime, then multiply AG, then divided by um, alpha, then multiply by gamma, then multiply by FY minus 0 0.85, then multiply by FC prime. So this is the minimum steel area. Now, after calculating the area of steel, the next thing you need to do, you just need to select reinforcement pattern and you are going to be using a table. So I'm going to be showing the table you are going to use to select the reinforcement pattern when we want to design a reinforced concrete square column. Now, after selecting the reinforcement pattern, then all you need to do, you just need to select the transverse reinforcement pattern. So basically, this is going to be the stirrup. So it is it's basically going to be the tide. So now we need to take a look at the requirement for the tide. So we basically need to take a look at the size of the tide we are going to be using. And also we need to take a look at the spacing from one tide to another tide. So now what ACI is saying is that the minimum tide spacing. Now, if we have a longitudinal bar up to 10 in diameter or smaller, ACI is saying that we should use number three bar. But if it is larger than 10 in diameter, then ACI is saying that we should use number four bars. So this is for the minimum tie spacing. Now for the maximum tie spacing, the maximum tie spacing is going to be the lesser of 48 tie diameter or 16 longitudinal bar diameter or the least lateral column dimension. So this is going to be the maximum tie spacing. So after that, you just need to make some checks to see if your column is going to be safe or not, if your column is going to be economical. So the checks we are going to make is, we are going to make sure that the steep percentage is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. So ACI is saying that your steep percentage should be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. And also we need to take a look at the clear bar spacing. Now ACI is saying that the clear bar spacing should be no greater than 6 inches. So the bar spacing, that is the spacing from one tile to another tile, they need not to be greater than 6 inches. So the maximum is going to be 6 inches. 6 inch so you need to be 2 3 4 5 inch but not more than 6 inch from another lateral supported bars now also for the cover requirement ACI is saying that a cover of 1.5 inch is typical for interior columns so we need to provide a cover of 1.5 inch and this is basically to prevent the steel from corrosion and this is basically to prevent the steel from deicing salts and to prevent the steel from corrosion so these are the steps for designing a reinforced concrete square columns. So in the next lesson, we are going to be designing a reinforced concrete column. So see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.